Vice President and Director of the Scalecroft Center for Strategy and Security at the Atlantic Council. Uh, Barry, this is the second time in recent months Biden has said the U.S. would defend Taiwan if China attacked. The White House says its policy on Taiwan has not changed, but is this language contradictory to that? Yes, it's, it's quite contradictory. I mean, the strategic ambiguity policy is called that because the idea is to be ambiguous as to whether uh, the U.S. would come to Taiwan's defense. And this is not the first time, as you pointed out, uh, for President Biden and other, other presidents. I actually think it's an artful way of reinforcing deterrence by acknowledging the one China policy, which has been in place for decades. The policy hasn't changed, um, but the president himself is strongly committed to come to Taiwan's defense if China would attack this thriving democracy. So I think in a very interesting way, I think it doesn't go so far as to break out of the ambiguity policy, but it makes very clear to China, you really shouldn't try to do this. Yeah, and as you said, the U.S. has always been deliberately vague on its commitment to Taiwan. But do you think it should take a clear stance given the apparent growing threat by China? I actually think this is exactly where U.S. policy should be, to be a strong policy to minimize the chances of a of major instability in Asia along major shipping lines for the global economy. I mean, this would be an absolute global disaster. So I think the, the sort of one-two punch of the president saying this again, but the saying we're sticking to the policy, I think that that is really a good approach for now. Biden also drew a parallel between Taiwan and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, of course, that prompted an angry response from Beijing. But can these two issues really be compared? I think they're very comparable in many ways. I mean, both Taiwan and Ukraine are not formal treaty allies of the United States. In other words, the United States is not legally bound by a treaty to defend them. But in both cases, their loss would be extremely damaging to U.S. interests and to allied interests. But, you know, there's also another way they're, they're similar. There's really no threat from Ukraine to Vladimir Putin. Um, you know, that was all propaganda. And there's really no threat to China from Taiwan. I think the real threat is both leaders, both dictators, Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin, they are threatened by a thriving democracy right next door because they don't want that coming to their uh, power base. That's the real similarity, and that's why they're so aggressive about both Ukraine and Taiwan. Do you think, though, that the U.S. vowing to defend Taiwan and kind of ramping up that, that use of that language is likely to provoke Beijing into stronger action? I don't think so. Uh, and the reason is um, there is a November Party Congress where Xi Jinping almost certainly will be anointed president for life. He wants maximum stability and calmness before that November Congress. He is already dealing with a, an economy that's not doing well, with a COVID policy that's not doing well, with uh, a, a, an alliance with Vladimir Putin that's hurting China's soft power. He will not do this anytime soon. So I think, um, I think it is safe for now. All right, Barry Pavel joining us from Washington. Thank you. My pleasure.